Hello, my wonderful bakers and homestead heroes. I'm Kim Artlip from This Old Baker. Today we're going to dive into a topic that is timeless as a freshly baked loaf of bread. Being frugal. Now before you crinkle up your nose at the word and roll your eyes, remember, frugal is not a dirty word. In fact, it's a testament to resourcefulness, creativity, and sustainability. Back in the days of pioneering women and during the harsh realities of the Depression area, making do with less wasn't just a lifestyle choice, it was a necessity. These incredible women have handed down some practical nuggets of wisdom that are surprisingly relevant for our modern homes and kitchens. So tie on your apron, preheat your ovens, and let's get ready to learn from the past. Tip number one. Waste not, want not. Depression era cooks were the ultimate kitchen magicians, transforming what uh, many of us might consider waste into culinary gold. They had a deep understanding that every bit of food was precious and could be used to nourish their families. Now let's take a closer look at how we can adopt this mindset and make the most of our kitchen scraps. Let's talk about leftover bread. That slightly stale loaf of bread is not destined for the trash can. It has a future as breadcrumbs, perfect for coating chicken or topping casseroles, or imagine it soaked in a custard, baked to perfection, and served as a bread pudding. Now, you've seen me do this recipe on thisoldbaker.com. There's also a video. So even crust can be toasted and ground into croutons and add a delightful touch to your salads. Vegetable peels. Okay, vegetable peels and ends. Before you toss your carrot tops and your potato peels, think about the broth that they could become. Collect them in a freezer bag until you have enough to simmer with some herbs, and you get a flavorful, flavorful, I can't even talk this morning, vegetable stock that serves as a base for soups, stews, and sauces. Not only is it cost effective, but a great way to control the sodium and additives that come with store-bought versions. My best friend Sandy's mother was a master at this. She kept all of her odds and ends and scraps and made the best soup. And I loved going to her house because her mother could scratch cook like nobody's business. Now, wielding herbs. You find yourself with some herbs that are a little past your prime. Don't just let them like wilt away. Chop them up, mix them with some olive oil, and freeze them in an ice cube tray. You're going to have an instant flavor bump ready for sauteing vegetables or marinating meats. Fruit scraps. Citrus pills can be zested for a pop of flavor in baked goods. They can be dried and mixed into teas. Overripe fruit can, is excellent for smoothies, baking, and jams. Even apple cores and peach pits can be boiled down for a naturally sweet syrup. By rethinking the way we view our kitchen scraps, we not only honor the resourcefulness of the Depression area cooks, but also contribute to a more sustainable world. So next time you're about to throw something out, pause and ask yourself, how can this be given a delicious second life? Your wallet and your taste buds are going to thank you. Now tip number two. I'm going to tell you there's seven tips here. Tip number two, grow your own greens. Growing your own greens is like printing your own money, but it's tastier and entirely legal. Those pioneer women of yesteryear would surely be proud to see us continue this tradition of tending to our own little plots of earth. And the beauty of a home garden is not just a savings, it's a connection to our food and the joy of watching something grow from seed to supper. Now, I don't have a homestead. I don't have a big piece of property. I'm a renter. But I can do an herb garden that's vertical. I have posts uh, from a former fence in my backyard, and I'm going to be doing a video and, and photos of this. And I'm going to mount uh, two liter bottles onto that through uh, ropes and, and nails, and I'm going to grow my herbs vertically. That way uh, I don't have to worry about the lawn crew that comes through that our landlord uses. I don't have to worry about animals and ants and everything else here in Florida. So I'm gonna start small with herbs because they're the perfect gateway to gardening. Basil, parsley, cilantro, and mint require very minimal space and they can live just in a sunny windowsill. So you know how there's nothing quite like snipping chives over your eggs 
or garnishing your pasta with basil leaves right from a plant. This is incomparable flavor compared to store-bought, and the cost is next to nothing once you get started. Now, venturing into veggies, once you get the hang of herbs, why not try your hand at vegetables? Salad greens like lettuce, spinach, and arugula are some of the easiest crops to grow. And I've done this before. I had five acres. I had a massive garden. I had an orchard. I had all kinds of stuff back in the day uh, when I lived in West Virginia and a whole other lifetime. So I grew all of those. Um, green beans, peas, corn, potatoes. You know, I love doing that. Now, what you need to also think about is the practicality of perennials asparagus, rhubarb, and artichokes. Those plants will come back year after year and you get a return on your investment and effort with very minimal additional work. And like I said, maximizing your space because I'm going to go vertical because I don't can't do the large plot, uh, plot that I used to have. And the ground down here in Florida is just not really conducive to what I want to do. So a vertical garden is my best bet. Raised beds and vertical gardens. So making use of container gardens, vertical planters, and a community plot is a fa fantastic way to grow your own produce in a smaller space. Balconies, patios, even rooftops can become spots for a vegetable uh, garden. And the ripple effect is beyond the immediate benefit of having fresh produce. Gardening can have a ripple effect on your lifestyle. It encourages healthier eating habits, provides physical exercise, and it is a fantastic stress reducer. And it's an educational experience for children and adults to learn where food comes from. So growing your own greens is more than just saving money. It's enriching your life with simple pleasures. So roll up your sleeves, get a little dirty, savor the taste of homegrown goodness. Your pocketbook's going to be so much greener for it. Tip number three. Bartering is back. Bartering may seem like a quaint practice from a bygone era, but it's been around for years, and there are actually barter companies where I live here in Florida. Um, in a world where the community takes a backseat to convenience, trading goods and service is a great way to get the benefits uh, that you need. Our grandmothers were onto something when they swapped eggs for milk. And today you might have a loaf for your signature sourdough, Trade it for some surplus tomatoes from someone's garden or your homemade jam for an, a scarf. The possibilities are endless and they're tailored to your skills and needs. And it, burning is great for building a relationship. It goes beyond the transaction. It builds your know, relationships with your neighbors, your community. It encourages conversation, fosters trust, and it strengthens the bonds between neighbors. You're not just getting something you need, you're also getting to know the people around you and creating a support network. And trust me, after the pandemic, that is so valuable. And remember, everyone has something to offer. Maybe you're great at fixing a bike while your neighbor's a graphic designer. Trade a tune-up on uh, for a, a logo for your side hustle. By bartering, you can leverage your talents and access services that might otherwise be out of reach financially. All right, tip number four, home remedies. Home remedies uh, or homemade um, DIY, however you're gonna call it, um, you know, homemade everything for cleaning are a treasure trove for simplicity and effectiveness. And this is, goes back to when the pantry was also your cleaning cupboard. Vinegar, baking soda, and lemon. They're not just staples for cooking. They're the workhorse of natural cleaning solutions. And they can tackle almost any mess without harsh chemicals found in many of today's products. Now vinegar, this is an acidic wonder that's a powerhouse for cleaning. It cuts through grease, it neutralizes odors, it leaves a streak-free shine on glass surfaces. So if you mix equal parts water and vinegar in a spray bottle, you have an all-purpose cleaner. For tougher grime, warm it a little bit. And it also can be used to descale appliances like kettles and coffee makers. Uh, it's fantastic. Let me tell you what, I have a, a Ninja coffee pot. I descale it and clean it on a, on a regular basis with vinegar. I don't buy all these pricey little tablets that they suggest vinegar. Vinegar does far better than anything I've ever used to clean and descale a coffee pot. 
baking soda. Now, baking soda is a mild abrasive, which makes it fantastic for scrubbing away tough stains without scratching a surface. Baking soda is also a natural deodorizer. If you sprinkle it on your carpets before you vacuum, it's going to eliminate smells. And for a potent cleaning paste, mix baking soda with water and use it to brighten grout or remove baked on food in pots and pans. And we're going to talk about lemon. That was my third in my, in my trilogy of clean. The citric acid in lemons is antibacterial and antiseptic. Plus it leaves a great scent. Lemon juice can be used to disinfect your cutting boards. It freshens your garbage disposal. A half lemon dipped in salt and baking soda will uh, shine brass. It'll shine copper. And don't forget the pills. If you infuse vinegar and lemon pills for a few weeks and strain it, you've got one of the best fragrant natural cleaners out there. So when you combine them, they're even more effective. Baking soda and vinegar unclogs drains. A paste from lemon juice and baking soda tackles rust stains, whitens surface. And there are other natural uh, items like essential oils that can add antiseptic qualities and pleasant fragrances to your homemade cleaners. Olive oil is great for polishing wood furniture. Very sparingly use it, very sparingly. And cornstarch can be used for cleaning windows and as a carpet cleaner. By using these homemade uh, alternatives, you're not only saving money, but you're reducing your environmental impact. These natural cleaners are biodegradable. They're free from synthetic fragrances and dyes that can harm aquatic life once they go down a drain. So embracing these homemade options for cleaning allows us to keep our homes sparkling while honoring the wisdom of past generations. It's a simple, sustainable approach that benefits our health, our wallets, and our planet. So next time you're faced with a spill or a spot, reach for these trusty ingredients and put them to work. Your house will sparkle just for pennies and you're going to feel good knowing you're continuing a tradition of smart, sustainable living. Tip number five, sewing and mending. Sewing and mending are just not thrifty skills. They're acts of rebellion against a throwaway culture that undervalues longevity. In the past, our ancestors took pride in their ability to repair and repurpose clothing. And we can carry on this tradition by breathing new life into our garments, saving money and reduce waste. You have a small tear or a missing button? That doesn't mean the end of your favorite shirt. With a needle and thread, you can mend these minor issues in minutes. Learn basic stitches like the running stitch, the back stitch, and the whip stitch. That's going to help you tackle most repairs. Patching for jackets, jeans, and more. And it gives you an opportunity to personalize your clothing and add unique touches that reflect your style. And trust me, size adjustments. Our bodies change, and that doesn't mean your wardrobe has to be constantly replaced. Mastering simple alterations, like taking in a seam, letting out a hem, can make all the difference in how your clothes fit. This doesn't, um, this not only saves you money, but it makes you feel comfortable and confident in your attire. Um, so there are some toolkit essentials you're going to need for a mending kit, needle, thread, Thread in various colors, scissors, pins, a seam ripper, measuring tape, some iron-on patches. Having these tools at hand make it easier to repair um, properly. So let's talk about upcycling. Sometimes a garment is beyond traditional mending. That doesn't mean it's useless. Old t-shirts can become tote bags, worn-out jeans can become denim skirts, and sweaters can be turned into pillow covers. And another thing you can actually do with old sweaters and socks Use them as the base over a tennis ball to make your own wool dryer balls. And I'm going to do this in a video coming up so you guys will get to see this. But if you're new to sewing, you want to improve your skills, there's plenty of resources available. We're going to be putting some online tutorials up. We're going to be doing some workshops. And it's a great way to learn and connect with others who share an interest in sustainable fashion. Now, the art of mending is deeply satisfying. There's a special kind of joy. Uh, fixing uh, and patching up uh, your beloved pants. And I just did this the other day to one of my pair of leggings, and I make jokes about how I live in leggings, but I've extended their life, and I've saved them from being thrown out. So next time you see a hole on a seam or a tear in your tote, see it as an opportunity to get creative, reduce waste, and honor the resourcefulness of those who stitched before us. Your wardrobe will thank you. Tip number six. Baking from scratch. Scratch is satisfying. 
Okay, cooking from scratch is a great journey back to the roots of culinary tradition. Every ingredient is chosen with care. Every step in the process is infused with love. In our fast-paced world, convenient foods offer quick solutions. But they can't hold a candle to the satisfaction of flavor that comes from a homemade meal. When you cook from scratch, you have complete control over what goes into your food. You can avoid preservatives, excessive salt, sugar, and customized recipes to suit your taste or your dietary needs. The result? Dishes that are healthier, more nutritious, and bursting with flavor. And it's a cost-effective cuisine. While convenient foods might save time, they often cost more than their homemade counterparts. By cooking from scratch, you're able to shop for whole ingredients in bulk, take advantage of seasonal produce, and reduce the cost per serving. Your wallet's gonna feel the difference, and so will your body. As somebody that struggles with issues with my liver and my kidneys, and I have to watch how and what I eat, this is very important to me to be able to listen to my body and give my body what it needs. Now, another thing about uh, cooking from scratch is it's a great way to turn meal prep into an opportunity to bond. Teach your kids how to knead dough, share stories while peeling vegetables. Those moments become cherished memories and instill in them valuable life lessons. I learned how to make every basic dish that I knew from my grandmothers. My grandmother McCoy, my grandmother Stone King, my uh, ex-grandmother-in-law, uh, Olive. You know, I learned to cook from those who came before me. I had aunts that showed me how to do uh, how to do things. I um, had a mother that didn't cook, didn't want to cook, had no desire to cook. So I was raised on convenient food convenience um, stuff and convenient foods. But every Sunday and every chance I got, I went to my aunt's house, Aunt Charlene, Aunt Peggy, uh, you know, Aunt Margie, different aunts and my grandparents. And I had food that was so good. And I love, you know, being able to, um, you know, share in making something because homemade food has a special way of bringing people together. A cake made from scratch carries the warmth of the hands that mix to batter. Uh, you get a lick the uh, you get a lick the beaters. Uh, I don't know if people do that now, but well, that was a big thing when I was growing up. You got to lick the beater. And cooking from scratch also means less packaging waste. You can buy ingredients in bulk, use reusable containers, and compost your scraps, contributing to a healthier planet. So making meals from scratch is a celebration of food in its purest form. It's an expression of creativity. It's a nod to tradition and a commitment to health. So next time you're pondering what to make for dinner, consider bypassing that boxed meal and those pre-made sauces. Embrace the process of cooking from scratch and let the flavor and the wholesomeness of homemade food fill your heart and your home. And finally, smart pantry stocking. Tip number seven. Smart pantry stocking is a strategic approach to grocery planning and food storage that can lead to significant savings and reduce stress around meal planning. Depression area households mastered the art of well, maintaining a well-stocked pantry, ensuring they could always whip up a meal even in the most lean times. So let's look at how they, how we can apply their wisdom to our modern kitchens. Bulk buying. Purchasing non-perishable items in bulk when they're on sale is the cornerstone of a smart pantry stocking. Grains, dried beans, pasta, canned goods, and spices tend to have long shelf lives and are often cheaper in a greater quality quantity. Just make sure that you have enough storage space and the proper containers to keep everything fresh and organized. Seasonal preserving is a great way to take advantage of seasonal bounty by preserving fruits and vegetables. Can, pickle, freeze, and drying are excellent methods to extend the life of produce. Not only does this practice honor the rhythm of nature, but it also allows you to enjoy your favorite flavors year-round without the premium price tag of an out-of-season produce item. And don't forget about your staples. A well-thought-out selection of staples is the backbone of any pantry. 
items like rice, flour, sugar, oil, vinegar, canned goods like tomatoes and beans should always be within reach. These essentials form the base of countless recipes. May, and this means you're always ready to cook up a storm. And don't discount inventory management. Keep an inventory of what you have on hand to avoid overbuying or letting items expire. This can be as simple as a list on the fridge or a detailed spreadsheet, however you want to go about it. And rotating your stock ensures your older items are used first, always on the front of the shelf, and nothing goes to waste. Let's talk about herbs and spices. A collection of herbs and spices can transform even the simplest ingredients into a gourmet meal. They take a very little space and they, mat, they, add, ugh, they add immense flavor and variety to your cooking. Plus, many herbs and spices have long shelf lives, so you can buy them less frequently. And let's not forget about those specialty items that can elevate your meals from ordinary to extraordinary. Sun-dried tomatoes, olives, can add a punch of flavor to dishes and are worth having on standby for when you want to add that special touch. Uh, I love sun-dried tomatoes and Tuscan chicken, so I'm just going to throw that out there. My husband hates olives, so olives are mainly in dishes only I eat. So resist the temptation of sales on items you rarely use. It's not a bargain if it's going to sit there on your shelf unused. Stick to buying what you know you'll eat and what fits in your meal plan. By adopting these pantry stocking strategies, you're going to find that you're better prepared for everyday cooking, as well as unexpected situations that might otherwise send you rushing to the store. You're going to save money by avoiding last-minute purchases. You're going to reduce the temptation of impulse buys. And with a pantry full of possibilities, you'll be able to fill your household Feed your household, sorry, <laughs> delicious home-cooked meals with ease, just like those resourceful homemakers of the past. So there you have it, friends. Seven frugal tips from the past that can enrich our lives today. Being resourceful isn't about scrimping and saving. It's about celebrating the abundance and simplicity. So the next time you need dough beneath your fingers, think of the powerful legacy of thriftiness we inherit from those who baked before us. Until next time, keep your ovens warm and your hearts generous. I'm Kim Artlip, rolling out another episode of This Old Baker Podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more hearty discussions and tips. Check us out on thisoldbaker.com. Uh, listen to our podcast on all the platforms. And check out our social media on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. Now go turn that flower into something fabulous. Happy baking.